In today's video, how to lose body fat, how to go from looking like this to looking like this, how to lose body fat after a bulk without losing that hard-earned muscle. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Rabella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, I wanna break down exactly how we're gonna go through this process of losing body fat without risking the loss of the hard-earned muscle that we've gained. You've just gone through a bulk. And this is another great question that I got from right here on my Instagram direct message. So guys, go to my Instagram direct message. Send me your questions. I'm gonna answer them directly. I'm even toying with the idea of doing 30 videos in 30 days in December. If you guys show some interest below, I'm gonna go through a lot of questions if we do it that way. But for today's question, the idea is, hey, we just got done bulking. So let me ask the question and then we're gonna start. I got another interesting question today and it goes like this. Hi Paul, are you still taking clients? Yes, I'll put a link below where you can sign up for a free phone consultation for coaching. If you guys aren't aware, I have that below. I'll also put it in the description and the comments. I'm five foot eight, weigh 170 pounds, and I bulked up to 183 and I'm trying to cut and lose fat, but there's a lot of methods out there. I go to the gym almost every day and I'm trying cardio. What would be most effective? All right, so. There's a few things that we know to be true based on the research. There's a lot of evidence out there about good ways to lose body fat and bad ways to lose body fat because a lot of times people focus on the scale and they don't realize that they're actually sacrificing lean body mass or muscle mass when they lose body weight. That can be very detrimental for long-term overall health and well-being, and especially those of us that are in the, in the realm of trying to change our body composition for the better. You know, we want to look good. We want to add some muscle. If you guys aren't familiar, I'll put some uh, video up here. I'm a competitive natural bodybuilder, 47 years old, still competing, right? I love this stuff. I'm still trying to improve myself and be better. And so I've gone through this over the last decade as a coach, uh, as a competitor, and learned everything I could. I've gone back to school and I've spent some time with some of the smartest people in the world around this idea of fat loss without the idea of losing muscle. And it's so important for a physique competitor, but for someone like you that's put some effort into bulking up, typically what we do when we bulk is we eat an excess of calories and we train really hard. But to lose that body fat without the muscle, you're gonna have to be a little bit more particular. Now the first and most important aspect of retaining muscle in my mind is gonna be the protein. You need to be taking in enough protein. Now there's a lot of evidence, a lot of research on protein, but I can give you a baseline number that's probably just gonna make it easy for you without having to kind of be too fussy. Focus on your target weight, right? You said you're up to 184 pounds. If you're getting around 184 grams of protein per pound, you're gonna be getting plenty. You could probably even be in the 170s or maybe even a little bit lower. The next thing we wanna do is focus on spacing that protein out, right? So every time you eat protein, it spikes your muscle protein synthesis or your body's ability to regenerate muscle. We want to do that as many times per day as we can possibly do it. Now there is something called a refractory period. Whenever you eat a large amount of protein, your muscle protein synthesis spikes and then it falls. Once it falls, you can then spike it again. So what I typically have my clients do is eat between four and six hours, typically between 30 to 50 grams of protein per meal, just depends on the size and the weight and the total protein they're getting. So typically between three to four, maybe even sometimes five large doses of protein per day, depending on the athlete, depending on what they prefer, what their schedule is like. This is gonna give us the most bang for our buck, especially when we're in a period where we're in a caloric deficit. To lose body fat, you must be in a caloric deficit. And when you are in that deficit, that's called being catabolic. When you are in a surplus, that's called being anabolic. So to prevent muscle breakdown while you are catabolic in a muscle building but fat loss stage, protein is gonna be our number one priority. The next thing we wanna focus on is the rate of weight loss. Now there was some really cool research done on division one volleyball players a few years ago where they talked about taking these athletes and losing weight and measuring their performance. And what they found was that if they lost no less than 1% of their body weight through their fat loss phase, their performance did not suffer. Meaning, if you are a 200 pound person or a 184 pound person, you should be focusing your weight loss efforts on around one and a half to two pounds per week. Any more than that, and you're gonna risk performance, you're gonna risk muscle loss. So taking it slow, setting up a diet and a lifestyle and a cardio routine where you're losing one to two pounds per week 
is going to ensure that your workouts don't suffer and that you are maintaining that muscle mass. Now, the big thing for me is the performance in the gym. I really like to focus on my athletes, make sure they're training hard. Why? That's really what builds and keeps muscle. And when you're in a fat loss phase, what built the muscle is what keeps the muscle. So if you can keep up with your intensity, you can keep up with your training volume, you're gonna keep up with your muscle while the fat is coming off. So the final piece of the puzzle that we'll talk about today is gonna to be cardiovascular exercise. Now, what I have been focusing on for the last few years is just doing some incline walking. It's my favorite form because it has very little impact on my ability to go train. So I'm basically doing it multiple sessions per day. One where I'll do a low intensity cardio session, one where I'll do a, you know, bodybuilding style training session where I'm trying to put some muscle on. This for me has worked very effectively, but depending on how active you are, depending on your lifestyle, you can focus on a step goal, okay? Cardiovascular exercise is just a way for us to help us create the caloric deficit. If you're restricting calories, it can also help to increase movement so that you begin creating that deficit through multiple facets. Oftentimes people will say to me, Paul, isn't it true that you don't have to do any cardio if you just bring your calories down very low? That is true. However, you're gonna to have to bring your calories down so low that you don't feel good. And if you don't feel good, you're not gonna train as hard. I have found the best approach is a moderate combination of both reducing calories and increasing your daily activity. That's why it's also important to track your daily activity because I've also seen people reduce their calories and without realizing it, they start to conserve energy, they move less, and they don't realize why they're not losing weight. Well, that's because your body is adapting to the changes in the calories and you're actually burning less throughout the day. All right, guys, so the real big picture here is make sure you're getting enough protein. Make sure that your calories and your macronutrients are in the right ratio. If you don't know what those ratios should be, I have a free macronutrient calculator right here on my website. I'll show it for you on the screen here. That's gonna set up your ratios the right way because you do need to keep your carbohydrates and fats in a proper range to be optimal for performance and be optimal for your hormones and digestion, right? We can't just do zero carb or zero fat diets. Those are very, very bad ideas. So the approach here should be a week by week adjustment based on where your calories and macros are, where your cardio is, and are you seeing changes? Now remember, sometimes when you're tracking fat loss, the scale is not gonna be the best representative. Sometimes you need to check your measurements, Sometimes you need to take pictures. I recommend doing all three and using all those data points to make adjustments. You can also pay attention to how your clothing is fitting. You can also pay attention to people giving you feedback. They might notice that your face looks leaner. They might notice that you're see they're seeing some changes. You might even notice small things like seeing some vascularity, just seeing some different changes in the physique that you haven't noticed before. Pay attention. Those are signs that you're actually getting leaner and sometimes the scale is not gonna represent that because what does the scale represent mostly? Water, our body is what, 70 to 80% water. So there's gonna be fluctuations based on your training intensity, based on your sleep, based on how much sodium you take in, how much water you consume. Our body weight is going to change a lot based on that, but body fat is gonna come off despite what the scale says at times. So be aware that you need to track all that. And then guys, just take your time. Don't be in a rush. Crash dieting is gonna cause a really bad rebound in almost all conditions. All right, hopefully that answers your question. And uh, don't forget, send me a direct message. Comment below if you're interested in 30 videos in 30 days. Thanks, guys.